look at them. Just this video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. <laughs> I told you it was sarcastic. I love sarcasm. <laughs>
they just had so much more to offer than we felt we did. And, um, you know, there, there were so many things that fed into that decision. And, and we were looking at his best interest and nothing else. And that was very, um, yeah, and it was kind of like about like the age, right? Like you were thinking, you know, it'd be better for him to be with sort of the younger family and a uh, Tylee yeah. too, as well, right? Yeah, right. And, and yeah, I, I mean, all we ever do is work and and go and stay home. And um, Charles and Lori were just out in the community doing stuff at church, just doing, always doing. And then Tylee was busy with her her art stuff and and Lori was busy with stuff she did so it was all uh, it was a good environment for 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 Canaan to be in um, and it was for a long time and then it wasn't so what made them change the name from Canaan just it sounded too I, don't know. I yeah. never asked it, it at that point he was theirs and um, we it we we accepted it. We accepted it. it we had a hard time yeah. swallowing it at first because it was very hard. Because I love the name yeah, Kane. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I love that name. And uh, but we we once we got used to the name JJ and and um, it, it was fine. I mean, it, it fit him. He was absolutely. It absolutely he was a JJ. <laughs> he really was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It did fit him. I, I honestly, I've always loved the name Canaan. I, I do, and uh, so it 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 worked out okay. Well, I know that. I mean, watch. Remember, right at the beginning when they were still missing, I think is when you were on the show. Um, there was all right. those videos of you with him and JJ, and it just seemed like um, like you guys are really close. You know. Oh. Uh, I love that little boy so much. Uh, you know, Ken and I have 16 grandchildren, and uh, we have eight great-grandchildren. But thank God our, our all of our grandkids are just so – they're just great, wonderful grandkids. None of them uh, really have a, any issues, special issues or anything. J.J., was the really the first child that I had been around that I watched grow up that was special needs. And autistic children just now that that I'm I'm so involved in that, the autistic children are so special. And I, I just can't help but love them. And uh, I've become friends with, we have, Kay and I have become friends with friends that ha have autistic children. And I, oh, my heart just, I, I just want to, I, I just want to love them and, and hold them and tell them how great they are and what their potential can be. And, and I just, that's my biggest soft spot in my heart. I remember that was something that, like, Lori, didn't she, there was medication that would keep him kind of calm, right? And she got rid of that almost, um, I'm not, I don't mean to just jump right into something like that, but I was made, it made me think of that because it seemed like that's how she tried to justify that, you know, he was a zombie all of a sudden, right? Because his behavior was uh -huh. different. I believe that, but they, one thing about autistic children, uh, they need consistency, they need the same routines, they need the same mom and dad, they need the same house, they need the same teacher school, you know, it, it really helps them to flourish, and and he had, you know, they moved a lot, but it was, it was always, you know, they were always there, you know, with him, so he really never was bothered by that, but... Um, when Charles was gone, um, and one of the things that struck me, the one thing that really just sickened me, and we learned this right after, uh, probably about a week after he they found their bodies, was that 
at his last day of school in uh, Phoenix, at his little school. Um, whoever brought him to school that day, I don't know if it was Lori. I don't. I'm assuming it was Lori. Um, but when he got to school, he was crying. Um, my dad's not dead. My dad's not dead. And with tears streaming down his face, and oh, I thought, I mean, who? He had Charles. So at that point, Charles had been dead for six weeks, and then she just—I believe she just kept telling him that Charles was working. He dad's at work. Dad's at work. But JJ could be quite forceful at times, and you know, I'm sure he wanted to FaceTime or he whatever. To talk but, to his dad. Um, yeah. You know. She, she blew up his world and then of course he was going to be uh, lashing out and angry about yes. it and um on a good day he could be hard to manage at times but uh this was just this was just so far out there and i do believe she didn't give him his medicine because so she could justify what she was doing absolutely yeah, it's, it's interesting how a lot of the stuff that we talked about, you probably don't remember because he's done so many interviews, but uh, no, I remember like, a lot. But like what, <laughs> what, what we were talking about back at the beginning, almost everything that we thought was going on is what went on. I mean, it was so bizarre. It was just a story that if you'd given to a, we talked about this, a story that if you'd given a Hollywood script to, they would have went, you sound like an idiot, get out of here. Right. You know what I mean? They would They would have. They would have like, just laughed and it's the craziest thing you've ever heard of um but it that's actually correct. happened you know that's the thing right we've actually had a couple of people reach out to us over the last three years and this one lady called us one night i don't know a year and a half ago and was telling us a story and and she was up there in the northwest and and her daughter was murdered her some a friend was murdered all these people were murdered and um nobody <laughs> believed this woman but anyway long story short it was a very scary story and it was a very long story but when she was done telling it i said you know i believe you because they can't make it up there's writers that can't make this up because it's too convoluted just like our story yeah and so they're there, and then we had another person call us um, not so long ago, and and it was this told us a story, and it's like we believe you. Man, so, I, I need yeah. I need you to tell me these stories so I can cover them. Well, those <laughs> I can't remember because uh, my story is enough to remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, let's see. There was something I was going to ask. Um, so how long before Charles was? killed i think he was murdered yeah obviously he was murdered um, did you guys were you suspicious of Lori? oh I, we when that night that she left him or when he got back from uh houston or wherever he was in texas uh to phoenix and Lori had taken his truck and all that what all of his clothes were gone that that night january 30th or 31st of 2019 um i was there i talked to him the next day and i flew out there the next day and mm. he was telling me these things Lori, he's like Lori said last you know a couple of weeks ago that she didn't want jj anymore she was done she she didn't want the kids she didn't want me she uh and and he said, and then she took this money out of my checking account and all this, you know, and, and then he's talking to me about this man named Chad Daybell who she's sending videos to. And um, I can't, I can't, it, uh, like, I can't stand that it, guy. He's just, uh. it, it was just, he was telling me, <laughs> like, man, this is uh. kind of crazy, but she was gone and never reached out to, to Charles or JJ, and you can't leave your little seven-year-old, six-year-old. He was six at the time. You can't leave your little six-year-old like that, and not, not, not. You can't do that. Something was wrong, and so absolutely something was wrong. Yeah, yeah, but but before that, what, what do you guys think of Lori before all that? Like she seemed sort of, sort of normal, right? Ish. 
anyway. We so I know that Larry in 2017 started saying that she was kind of spinning off. He he said something's wrong know. there. I don't know what it really? is, but really? he's wow. got his intuition is very strong and. He is very intuitive. Wow, he's a, like an FBI agent or something. Come on, look, look at uh, that's amazing, Larry. So, so what, 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 what do you think you remember uh, back then when you thought something was off? What was that? It was the little details, uh, lack of attention, lack of communications, um, and by say communications lack of communications with us uh, on incidents that happened in our life and the, the, the sickness of Kay's mom and the eventual uh, demise of Kay's mom and her passing and she never showed up and it, it was things that even Charles was doing um, not uh, she was not wanting to be with the family. Little things that Charles said to me personally. And uh, it, it, I mean, it, it, my intuition was just, I, if I'd have ever really, I, I should have pursued it more. And, and I have pretty well lived my life and I've done well by following my intuition. And uh, whether it be business or people, uh, friends that were supposed to be friends and stuff like that. But I, I, I told Charles on numerous occasions, Charles, you, you, you've got to have situational awareness at, at all times. And if there's something going on, now, Charles was not the person to own a gun. I, the, the story that was concocted about him attacking uh, Alex with a baseball bat, we, I knew the moment he said that, that that was a total BS lie. Have you guys and, watched the uh, body camera footage many times where she's being interviewed over there? With uh, time, yeah, that's and, the and most craziest it, thing I've ever seen. I mean, she, yeah, it just we, confirmed everything we, that, that I thought. In yeah, the tape, uh, we saw a lot of stuff in there that we didn't that, want to see that we weren't told about, yeah. and just a lot of stuff. It was it seeing that was just that nine one one call of that night with Charles, and then the next day with him at the, going to her hotel looking for her yep. and um, her being at the uh, police station and he took her purse and, and I mean, yeah. he told me stuff, but you know, her version of it was quite different than his. But yeah. So that, yeah, that body camera with Charles. Yeah. How crazy was that when the whole, that's where we heard about the Ned, uh, what's the last name again? Ned Schneider. Schneider. Yeah. Schneider. For Nick Schneider. It was, I, I can't ever get it straight. Yeah, either Nick or Ned or whatever. And yeah, so it's either Nick or Ned. Yeah, yeah. but what about the, the body camera footage at the residence after Charles got killed? Mm -hmm. See, that was when you look at Lori's behavior in there, and Alex even. He wouldn't answer. There was a couple, I made a video where I took the 911 call, played it, and then linked it up as the cops were showing up at the end of the 911 call with the video. And then they have this. You know, you have Alex on there. I mean, he just, <laughs> his behavior should have indicated almost immediately to that officer that he was, there was more going on there. And then Lori, my God, I mean, she acted like she was about to try to get a date with the officer. I mean, with the cop. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing we said. She's flirting. Yeah. Oh, I'm 5'6", 120. Ooh, you know, whatever the hell tall she was. She was yeah. making these, oh, it was just so ludicrous. I mean, I couldn't even believe it. Uh, so let's see. So you started noticing stuff. Uh, well, he told you about things in January. You were on to her like in 2017, but in January that year. And then you, and then at some point he switched his life insurance policy because he knew uh, that some, he really believed something was going to happen to him. 
It feels like like he was that worried, and and he changed it to you, right? I mean, because I mean, this is all in the news and everything. So he yeah. changed he changed it, and because he knew and he didn't want Lori to have any control of it, right? Well, yes, absolutely. He he just he told me that we would end up with JJ anyway. If something happened to him, we would end up with JJ. And he wanted us to have that because, you know, his schools, the special schools and stuff are expensive. And he just wanted to provide for him. So, um, and he just didn't trust Lori anymore. And yeah, and yeah. his instincts were right. But the problem was he didn't, he didn't listen to his gut and take uh, appropriate uh, precautionary actions. Yeah. So sort of like a little bit like Larry, his gut feeling was in 2017 was yeah. something's not right here. But you're kind of it's hard to bring that up with somebody in, right. and try to jump in the middle of their marriage or something like that. So, well, I don't have a problem with it. I don't either. <laughs> okay. well, you were telling me that. Are you nuts? No, that's what Are I you told crazy? Him. Are you out what of your mind? What are you doing? Mind? Oh yeah, <laughs> you're out with this woman drop her go get her divorce and and look charles could he had women any woman he wanted any woman he wanted <laughs> and and but he was 100 percent. now he was a thousand percent in love with laurie and uh and i i you know i have to admit the years before this that she was i, I enjoyed being around her and uh, I didn't enjoy being around her because she couldn't cook. And, and I'm <laughs> sitting next to the best Cajun cook in the world. <laughs> oh, but yeah. anytime, anytime I traveled over there to Hawaii, yeah, her or, job or was Phoenix, to cook. Charles was like, hey, what are you going to make? you going to make gumbo? Are you going to make pork rolls? Uh, what are you going to make? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Her idea of a family <laughs> meal was cookies and and uh, ramen soup. Ramen soup. And, <laughs> no, wow. Charles was raised on real food, and she uh, did make a good fruit salad, though, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, kind of hard to mess that up, though, right? You it is <laughs> to open up for two or three cans and pour them in a bowl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah here you go. Put a little whipped cream and stir it up, and yeah. I got a salad, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, well, there's some stuff that. Uh, so, Charles, is that case going to go to trial, you think, too? I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they, they, the grand jury indicted her, uh, or guess it was a grand jury, right? Yeah. It the was grand, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. She was indicted and, and charged with conspiracy to commit murder. And in Arizona, as in Idaho, it carries the same penalties as pulling the trigger yourself Absolutely. so uh, she did it she she yeah and tammy she, is going to be a case at some point right yeah and then you know what i think i mean after all that though i think you, there's still another case for brandon uh boudreau and then you yeah. sort of wonder like who else is part of that conspiracy yeah. you know right um, and we yeah. have our own we really yeah. want, don't want to talk about that yeah we don't want to get Got to be careful with that. Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, the thing I was just going to bring up was, remember the Nate Eaton storage unit video? I mean, that's yeah. right at the time. You see him, I think, it, taking out the tire, and then right after that's the shooting, almost like there was a space being made for mm -hmm. Alex, I, I believe, who was in the Jeep using Tylee's Jeep, drove over and shot at Brand Brandon Boudreaux, missed, then they came back. Or, yeah, he missed, and then he came back, and then he put the tire back in the Jeep. It all just matched right. up so perfectly. It was, it was insane. Yeah. Also, you got to remember, that was not Tylee's Jeep. Uh, that was Charles' well, Jeep. Well, I mean, he bought it for her. Well, so. it was still in his name yeah, when they Charles killed him. Thing. Absolutely. And so, uh, that was yeah. That the Jeep they, was? Okay, I thought it was. Well, Tylee was her car to use, though, right? Right, right. It was. Okay. Yes. And I'm not taking that away. I'm just making sure we understand that was still, yeah. Charles was still paying all the bills. That makes, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. hard for a 16 year old to pay for car payments, you know, or, seven, yeah. you know, I think she was just turning 17. I can't remember exactly. But. She was 16. In 2019, she was, uh, I thought she was 15 she when, was, when she got it. 
or 16? Because I know she had, there was an issue with the driver's license. And she was born in 2000. I don't, you're take, bringing up too many details. Okay. 2003. <laughs> she was 16 then. Yeah. And they murdered her right before her yeah. uh, 17th birthday. Yeah. And so that's, it's interesting too, because she's not alive at the time that the Jeep is sitting there and then it's being used. But nobody knew that at that time. Right. I mean, I, I think I think most people thought, you know, e even if you didn't want to believe it, that something bad probably happened since they disappeared, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys were, seemed like you were pretty nervous about something bad that had happened. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I was going to ask you guys, observe a time when you felt like you were in danger. Yes. Well, <laughs> not only were we no felt doubt. we were told. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you guys would have been public enemy number one, you know, like. Yeah, and. Uh, I mean, for, Charles, do what you want to talk. Well, uh, all I was going to say was prior to the death of uh, Alex, uh, both of us w were situationally aware and protected at all times. Yeah, inside the house, room to room. Yeah. I would carry a gun with me. Wow. I, Jeez, yeah, you get oh, smart. Oh, Alex is crazy. Alex is crazy. Alex is crazy. I don't put anything past him. And so I knew that she didn't know who got the insurance money because the insurance company didn't tell her. But she figured out probably it had to be either me uh. or Charles, two older sons. But and, but but if you if something happened they, to you, it wasn't going to. Oh, go ahead. Too. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Go ahead. No, but I mean, they were like me. They were they were nervous about all this too because they did. She didn't know who got the money exactly, yeah. and um, hmm. so they. It was and terrible. Yeah. The day that when we got the phone call that Alex was was dead, it was like, whew, Thank God, I can take a break now. What do you guys? I, like, I think Alex. I don't care, care what it says on that thing. I think the same thing that killed Tammy killed Alex. What Absolutely. Absolutely. Agree. He, was, okay. he was poison. Yeah. Yeah. And that poison, I'll be well in Tibet, had to come from South America. Well, it had to be this. I guarantee it's the same poison that killed Tammy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's I, all I can. That's all I'm going to say. I've learned throughout this from investigators that when you start looking at poisons that you have to be very specific in, in what you're looking for. So to you just kind of peel the onion back and peel the onion back and it can get quite expensive. Yeah, very so expensive. like I doubt they ran a real extensive blood panel and looked for poisons. I don't know at that point though, there was a lot of suspicion, uh, uh, yeah. you know, surrounding all this. Yeah. So, I don't know what they looked for, but I do believe that it's the same thing like you that that killed Tammy. And it's in, that, uh, it makes it interesting. Always. You, you yeah. always, yeah. I mean, I think logic sort of dictates it since he died the day after they exhumed the body of Tammy. Don't you right. find that? That's where you just go, okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I mean, we knew that we knew like a couple of days before Tammy's exhumation that 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 they were uh, exhuming her. Um, and so we knew that it happened that day and then boom, the next day it's, it, it's, you know, Alex is dead. So it's like, y'all have no idea what this was like <laughs> prior to the world knowing about it. Just me and Larry knowing about it yep. and me sitting at, at our CPA's office and I'm like, y'all, you know, we, we've got a lot going on right now with my grandson and my brother and. You know, um, so I didn't get my stuff into them on time. Well, I think you guys are the ones that made it. You, you, I mean, you guys are basically heroes in this. Like, you got law enforcement moving on things. I mean, you remember the whole thing where you would communicate with JJ um, on, I don't know, was it, I don't know what app it was, but you would FaceTime. FaceTime. And then all of a sudden he wouldn't, wasn't showing up and, he was yeah. missing, and then you guys had them go out, I think, in October out to, like, Rexburg and looking for him. And that's when it all the ball started getting rolling, right? First of November, yeah. Right. J.J. would FaceTime us all the time. I mean. Well, yeah. he got better at it, though. Yeah. When he first started, 
Well, at first, when he first started knowing how to use the phone, oh, oh my, my God. God, 50 times. But, <laughs> yeah. And he'd talk for a second, they got to go, Mama, bye. Yeah. And he'd hang up, and then it, five it, seconds later, yeah. he's calling again, hey, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> he'd call sometimes. He'd say, yeah. I don't know. Mama. I don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> well, he didn't know what to say. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. <laughs> he say, Mom, yeah. I don't know. Every one, every one of those conversations still are so deep in our heart and, and our soul. And we'd laugh at him. And, and we'd laugh at him then. And, and, and it got to be where we, we expected. <laughs> yeah. You guys have and such uh, great got, memories of that. Oh, yeah. it is wonderful. And then it got to be the point where Kay and I would say, it, Mama, I don't know. Right. <laughs> She'd ask me. <laughs> like, if we're looking right, where do you want to go eat? I'd name a couple of things, and then he'd say, Mama, I don't know. And he will. <laughs> or I'll tell him, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but Jesus, I miss that. I miss it so much. And you, uh, but you... Something about some of those, I can't remember exactly, maybe you could describe it, there were communications that weren't happening that led you to be more concerned or something, right? Using well, using that app, I thought. No, just, I mean, it was, it was FaceTime. Yeah, like it was FaceTime, but he didn't help. show up one t Like one time yeah. they said mm -hmm. there was something that, ha can you explain that? Do you remember that, Larry, at all, what I'm talking about? Uh, you know, we have become so used of JJ FaceTiming us and and uh, or even calling us. I mean, we we just look so forward to those moments. And as Kay just said, it may only last two seconds, but you know, it was to us, it was the ultimate communications. And then when those communications, uh, the issues started coming forth, and JJ was lack in calling us and FaceTiming us. And, mm -hmm. and, and so then good. the last two FaceTimes we got were very uh, uh, managed. From when Charles got murdered till uh, we the last time we heard from JJ was August 10th of 2019, yep. and from July 12th when we found out till August the 10th, we had a total of two minutes, two minutes of of contact with yeah. him, and that was it, wow. all in total. Dude. That was highly unusual. Yeah, and Fair. with the, with and also with me. Text and Lori begging her, let us come see him. We let us talk to him. Let us FaceTime him. Yeah. You know, just constantly. I was constantly bugging her, and you know, for Nothing all the good happened. it did, it did no good. You know, Greg, if Lori would have just had enough common sense to call us, text us, send a smoke signal up, have somebody call us. We had agreed, and by agreement, the family had agreed. I mean, basically, we were just going to sign the back of the check and give us give her the check and say, you know, we'll take both of the kids. I mean, obviously, we we had we wanted JJ uh, because uh, at that point, Holly had really become pretty independent. And, uh, you know, she was approaching age of legality. And, uh, you know, she could have made her own decision, but she had a home with us without a doubt. And if she had just answered our text, it, it just just called us, said, hey, look, can y'all take JJ back? You know, but it was vindictiveness. It was greed. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, the, it just seems her killing JJ has no purpose whatsoever other than to cause pain and to punish you guys. That's it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and she won. Yeah. She has called us, caused us 
absolute pain, uh, depression. Yeah. I mean, life changing. It's life changing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's even if life. she goes to prison, I mean, she will for the rest of her life. I would hope, anyway. Um, yeah. There's no winning, you know, because JJ's not here or Ty Lee. Right? So, no. right. I mean, the money at that point was really irrelevant. I mean, I've done well in life, and, uh, and we don't need it. But uh, just give us JJ. You know, take him to a police station. Take him to the hospital. Uh, yeah. Flag a, a patrolman down and say, look, I, I can't handle him. Call his mama and papa. All she had to do was say, hey, I'm sick. Uh, come get JJ. And, and I mean, we would have never said anything and, and about And there's never, her, there would have her, never been an issue. Where is he at? How fast? How did, I look, I'd have chartered a jet in a in an hour. And listen, there. everybody, we know that's true because of how many times you've flown back to Idaho. Oh, no. <laughs> how, many, how many times how many have you guys times done that? Driven. We've and actually flown. driven there. Oh, you've driven too? Yeah, it's probably yeah. good to decompress a little bit. Yeah, we have time. I, I love driving. I, I do. I've driven millions and millions and millions of miles. Three million miles? Oh, probably. probably. <laughs> I was kidding. No, no. Do you guys have uh, like a camper or something? Or do you just have no. a... Uh, we work? had a transportation company. Yeah. Oh, okay. We own a transportation company. We carried uh, employers for the offshore oil and gas industry and the LNG industry. And Kay and I both. You know, we're both CDL drivers. We both not anymore. Well, you're I'm not. retired. I still have <laughs> how nice seventy six, and I won't. I just won't give up my motorcycle endorsement, and I won't give up my CDL until they tell me either. You know, you got thirty minutes to live, or <laughs> yeah. or I get to the point where they take it away from me. Let me uh, let me just ask some random things like what do you guys think of like uh what are your thoughts on like melanie gibb for example <laughs> i just switched the topic really quick uh, you don't have to say you don't have to say okay i guess i could say but um let's see and then there was this other person though that was they have a podcast out there i don't know if it's preparing the people or something but it, she had dark hair and her and chad used to have I have all of the videos. I downloaded them all. Oh. And she, her and Chad, I forgot her name. What is it? Um, she's dark. Oh, yeah. Julie Rowe. I'll just say Rowe is her last name. But she would do these yeah. things where, like, they were envisioning Tammy dying and stuff in those. Like, hey, is she going to – I see her dying. And they go, well, it's not really time yet. So sometimes I wonder, like, <clears throat> are there other people <clears throat> involved in a bigger way? You know, I think Chad, like with Julie, was um, testing the waters. I think he was using all that crazy talk um, to get gain attention from women, and then with Julie, I guess she she fed into it enough to where he just went a little further with her on it, and then then whatever they, I don't know why they. You know, I don't know what happened with them, but I'm just saying. I, and then I think um, Lord was was just another one in a in a string <laughs> of women, and she just bit hook, line, and sinker. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there's a conspiracy circle. And I've said this numerous times on numerous interviews. There's a conspiracy circle, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, every one of them are to be indicted. Uh, I am really disappointed in a, a, a lot of the, the, the charges and the filings that, that they weren't indicted. Well, it's and well, sometimes you sometimes you leave them free so you can you, you get a sort of a side deal with them because yeah. they're not the actual killer or in the closest circle. Like it's really Alex, Lori, and Chad, right? Then you've right. got. There's others. Yeah, there's well, others. Yeah, I know the I know the other ones, but no, uh, no. I mean, I actually think maybe, maybe Alex's wife. Uh, I mean, I actually think <laughs> I actually think there's something there, and then also um, 
the niece of Lori, etc. Right. So it just feels like there's these things going on, and um, I don't know. You I, know, I guess I can't really talk about it if you don't want me to. Uh, you're 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 liable like us. <laughs> right. Any one of those individuals, the first time th anything was said about death, should have be a man enough, woman enough, with an, uh, enough integrity to say, this isn't right. I am not going to be a part of this. If I hear it again, I am going to the authorities. I am going to notify authorities of what's going on and what's being said. But none of them had the balls enough to even say that or do something like that. And so I'm an angry person at all of them. And I, I, I don't, I, I try to mince my word, but on the other hand, I, I am going to, I'm going to say w what I feel in my heart. Yeah. I can't not. That's just part of my, uh, who yeah. I am. I got something to say. You better get ready because it's going to be said. And if you think I'm bad, you already been around my mama. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I always thought, like, you know, the, I don't mind saying people's names because they're in the public domain out there. They're part of the case, like Ian Pulowski, right? He is somebody that came forward and gave the information about the uh, the weird ass, uh, I mean, I don't mean to, but just the crazy zombie, crazy. The, crumby, the crazy zombie stuff and a real document type of thing. And Absolutely. thank goodness for Natalie for making that happen absolutely natalie is an unsung, yes. unsung well, hero. well tell me what happened in that I, I don't know what happened there absolutely and we absolutely Wait, he, you you said you don't know natalie well i don't know what, what natalie and ian Pulowski how that came about oh okay well i mean i, I really don't want to be talking about them yeah. but she was instrumental in him uh turning over that laptop to the uh yeah. well, that's what i mean yeah Okay. Hmm. So how did, oh, you can't say how that came about or? Uh, really? Okay. Well, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that's great. Though. I mean, they, he's a wonderful yeah. person. We love her. We love she's, her. She's part of our family. And her family is, I consider her kids, my grandchildren, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, I just, I just like being around her. Hey, you, you, you guys want to hear something crazy? <laughs> that's, well, I mean, you've heard. No. <laughs> yeah, you've only heard. That's all you've ever heard. <laughs> We've been through the last Hey, uh, I, I was watching. No. See, so look, okay, you know, there's a show that was on TV about zombies, right? Yeah. Walk the Walking Dead, right? Walk the Dead, so yeah, this, right. This, so this is, this is, I absolutely believe what I'm about to tell you here. I, I went and watched the whole series again just because I like uh, the show is good. I like watching the show. And then I was on, I was watching an episode, and guess what uh, this one character said? I can't remember his name now, but he said, My mom told me that if I kill the zombies, it frees the souls of the, you know, and it's like, oh, my God. That's where they got, because this was a year or so before that document came out, and that's how ridiculous this shit is. I guarantee, uh, uh, I guarantee. You can't make up, right? Yeah. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody would have wrote this yeah. and brought it to the producer and said, I've got a storyline. Yeah. There is nobody would have taken this. They wouldn't have believed it. Been... Right. And there there it was, an actual Hollywood uh they got part of their story out of there. I guarantee you that's where they got that yeah. from. I, I believe that. I uh, I thought about that a while a long time ago too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's crazy. Um so, so great. Do you have a live chat? Or, this is live, right? Yeah, it's live. Yeah, there's chat over on. You have a chat going? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I can see it over here. People are chatting. Oh, okay. They all, just, wonder. They all just love you guys. They're just, I mean, if you're ever on again and it's on YouTube, you can uh, go to the YouTube video and, and you can actually pull out the chat and have it sit there. Yeah. Unassociated with the video playing. You, don't even, you can even close down the video and the chat sitting there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, well, to everybody that is watching this, we absolutely love Greg and his show, and and we thank everybody out there for so much support. Y'all will never know how much that means to us, 
because we have days, and I mean, sometimes it's many days, and especially in the last couple of weeks, that without the support of the community, the country, and, and our friends from around the world, and the, the, it, it's just, I can't imagine having to live through this and, and live through what we're going through on oh, a daily, man. alone, I'm telling you. That would be... That would be hell. It, people, that would be hell. People yeah. thought when we were, you know, they would say, we're so sorry and you're having to live this out in the public. Honestly, I think that that's part of how we've gotten through this, yeah. gotten through this is because of the public and uh, just their support. And, you know, there's some assholes out there that are just mean and, and ugly people and they're everywhere. But for the majority, most yes. people are kind and and sympathetic and, you know, they, they mean well. We, so. mean, we get to meet the really good people that in the world. We are so blessed. And we get letters and texts and, and from all over the world. And especially it seems because of my love for autistic children that, that we get so much from families that, you know, that have autistic children and, and how much they love them and, and, and that we understand and how much love that we get back from them. And just to see their eyes light up, just to see them, it, it's... Yeah. I, well, I, I, truly, I, can, I can tell you that everybody... Yeah, I mean, that's such a noble thing, too, to you know have people reaching out to you. And, and you guys have been like outspoken about that. Um, but, I mean, I can tell you that over the years like all the we call them freaks we're the freaks you know the, the crime freaks <laughs> like that watch hairhead, like yeah. hairhead they're freaks yeah we, we call ourselves <laughs> the the freaks there's even like we uh oh i mean i can hold this up this is the stress ball see it says freak yeah. on it right there uh, uh they all really like you guys i mean they just always are just like oh you know every time we talk about you guys and they're always really supportive and i mean right now there's heart, hearts all over the place in the chat well we're really sorry it's taking so long to get on but oh we were God. contractually obligated for a while and yeah um, and then we just you know i mean after after uh issues they found the kids bodies it was let's see june july august two and a half months later we had a hurricane that wiped you know, we, we had did significant her, damage hurricanes. to our home, wow. so we had to move. And Jeez. then six weeks later, there was another hurricane, which there was so much damage already. I don't yeah. know what well, it one did. knocked us down yeah. hard. The other one just kicked <clears> our ass. And then we got COVID. Then we got, I mean, there was. Oh, do you guys one... actually get catch COVID? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. we did. November well, of 2020. Yeah, but we only and, caught it once. Our granddaughter had it three times. Yeah, she's Jesus. good, though. <laughs> but. <laughs> That's wild. I mean, uh, we've had so much going on, and just just to preclude that, I was uh, we had sold our company. I was burnt out for the last three years with our company, and I mean, so I was exhausted mentally and emotionally already when this started. And so, I mean, it's taken us a while to really start feeling um, human again. Yeah. And, um, I mean, really lately is I'm finally starting to kind of feel like my old self maybe, but, um, don't be fooled. She certainly has her days. <laughs> I think you guys yeah. look, I think you guys look great, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I, I did have one thing I was going to ask when they, you just mentioned a minute ago, when they found JJ and Tylee, was that a, um, I know. See, we cover a lot of missing persons cases, and then also missing persons that are presumed dead. Uh, was there any relief, um, relief at that? At least, at least somehow you got the you got to find them. Yeah, you know, it it, it was a relief, but in the same no, breath, yeah. 
it was that we knew where he was. It was a relief. Yeah, because sometimes nobody ever gets to bury. Well, I guess you guys are still in a weird limbo there, still, right? What is going still, on? That's crazy. Jesus. You know, it, it looks like we'll it, have it, year I, I have to agree with Kate. There was there was a definitive answer, but I, we couldn't. It, I still have a hard time accepting that you know he's not going to to be here, and we won't have him. I mean, I truly, truly believed in my life that JJ would outlive me by far, and. And that, you know, he was so intelligent. Oh my, he was so intelligent. And we had a standing joke between us. And I may have said this before. I, I started when he was young because he was reading, writing, doing everything he wanted to at four years old. And uh, I would tell him, I said, JJ, Papa's going to teach you how to count cards. And when we get old, me and you are going to go to Las Vegas, and and <laughs> me and you you're going to count cards for Papa. And so, yeah. over the 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 years, I, I'd tell him, I said, JJ, where are we going to on your twenty first birthday? We're going to Las Vegas, and I'm going to count cards. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, you know it it's. There's so many things. That's weird because you yeah. just were at Vegas last year. Yeah, he had a good sense of humor. He did. He, his, oh, little, his little personality his, was just really starting really to come developing. Out. Yeah, because um, he really didn't talk till he was four, four, almost five. Yeah, and then you really couldn't understand him very clearly till he was like six, mm -hmm. and um, so his really his little personality was coming out so charles was a jokester yeah and he would always have these corny jokes right and corny. i'd be like i rolled my eyes at charles a million times you know just oh my god <laughs> and, but Jeez. so he had jj he had jj to uh practice on all the time and jj had his little sense of humor was yeah. just and he it was, was truly it developing was, yeah. at, at the last of his life yeah and I mean, he was just—he was a mountain. He—he he was my mountain. Yeah, that's so so sad. You know. Um, well, hopefully, well, I'm a hundred percent sure that uh, Lori and Chad will get justice. I think the Alex, though. I mean, he's not alive. So if the if the death penalty was something that. That might have been for yeah. him, but I think yeah. he's—I think he's like the—you know—we've always believed he's the hitman for the entire cult, if you will, um, and um, and he's not alive. But now you wonder—I hope he doesn't isn't. Well, you know, it's going to be that he's going to be the scapegoat, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no doubt. And they're just going to end. But there's a lot of texting and things that sort of counter contradict that, so it's, that's good. Let me guarantee you this. There's going to be details that come out in this court that they're going to peg them to the foot. And it's coming. And um, there's, there's a lot that we're all going to learn. Yeah. Larry and I, you know, everybody thinks we, we, uh, that we know we're, everything. We're an insider, so we know all these things. Yeah. Well, we really don't. Mm -hmm. And, they only give us a little bit as we need to know it or, you mm -hmm. know, just preparing us, preparing us. But and the, um, the other part of it is that there is no doubt that uh, Alex was the hatchet man. But I can absolutely guarantee you that Alex was not the person calling the shots. He wouldn't have done it without. He, being told. he wouldn't have been well, done. Especially it. at Tammy's house, right? I mean, of course. Oh, you know, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. He, I mean, uh, he was the first one. I bet you that pellet shooting. Remember the first incident that happened with her? And she yeah. even posted on Facebook, oh, wow, this weird thing happened. Yeah. Alex, Alex missed again. I mean, that's really what it came down to. Yeah. You know, for too. somebody. Alex missed again. <laughs> Yeah. What, for somebody who was supposedly this a skilled, marksman. skilled marksman and stuff like that, 
he was a piss poor shot. <laughs> he really was. I mean, my God, yeah. uh, uh, person in, in, to know the need of what he was doing and, and a weapon to choose to do it with. I truly believe in my heart that Alex on one side was probably a pretty good person. But on the other side, when you've got this circle jerk people, uh, circle of jerks, as I call them, <laughs> uh, that, th that there's no doubt that he followed the orders. And, and conspiracy is conspiracy. And uh, I think that I'm hoping that with the details that are available, that that conspiracy is proved beyond a shadow of a doubt. I think I, I think conspiracy, yep. the conspirators in a conspiracy to commit murder are even more culpable than the actual shooter because the shooter oh, is really I, the shooter is really I, just the weapon that they used, I, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the physical part of it is like. You know the world or the the the, the woke cult to say, well, the gun killed the person. No, I, I've no. I've carried a gun my whole in life, my whole life, and it's never killed anybody. It's it's the human behind it, and and uh, only a human can pull a trigger. So I I don't I I I want to always believe in my heart because I. I try to find the best in people that Alex probably was a decent person at one time, but I think his sister had him so warped and we don't know the, com the complete reasons why. And then you throw these other jerks in that uh, we'll, I don't, we'll never know. Yeah, it almost wouldn't it almost I, seems like it almost feels like you'd almost have to believe in this garbage to do what. Oh, yeah. See, like it's like Alex, right? Like, did he believe in this weird zombie crap? Because here's what they're gonna say: is I think Lori and Chad are both gonna say, "Yeah, we had this thing, but we, you know, we just talked about it. It was just sort of a, you know, a fanciful idea about the zombies and killing the zombies and freeing the soul." But he took it literally. And when I referred to JJ and Tylee as zombies, I didn't realize that he would take it seriously. Okay, see, can you see that argument coming? Well, it, yeah. it wasn't Alex taking it seriously, and in which he did. It was Laurie and Chad verbalizing to, uh, to them and then when they started putting this out in charts, when they started defining it in names the and the, the dark and the light, we used to, we actually had mugs that said we had mugs that were four point two dark and four, yeah, uh, three and everybody, <laughs> uh, one of those circle jerks, should have said this is going too damn far. Wait right. a minute. This this is not what this is about. We're not into killing people. We're not into not into saying that JJ was a, a zombie, and right. that you know, and praying. Yeah, well, I know. I know one of the people that's that exactly what you, yeah. Breath. I know exactly Everyone who you're talking about. People should have turned to Lori <laughs> yeah. and to Chad and said, "Y'all are out of your damn minds. This is enough. Yeah. We're out of here." And should have gone to the yeah. authorities and said there is an issue, and we can't, other than our testimony, we can't say there's anything happened. But I can tell you right now, they're wrong. They're guilty. Oh yeah, well it's like seeing a fire, not selling fire to help everybody, you know, to get out. Right. You're you're just like you see this thing. It's so ludicrous, and you're naming people zombies, and you know that the the actual doctrine that you came up with means that you have to kill the physical body to free the original soul that's stuck in limbo somewhere. So you know that that's what they're going to be doing. So they, they almost justify, uh, here's the thing is Lori well, is going to pretend that she believed in it and she was a hero for saving 
Tylee and JJ because she freed their original souls, but it's complete garbage. She's the one. That's bullshit. Yeah. That ain't garbage. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'll call it that too. Bullshit and garbage. But that's what she's gonna say, right? Don't you guys think that? At some point. I don't. So. I, I don't. I don't mean to get you riled up right at the end there. I was just like, uh, that's that's the part that makes me angry too, though. You you have no concept of what. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're a family member, so it's making you furious. Like, for us, it just makes me angry. Like, it's just knowing that there's people like that. You know? Yeah. Thank God I've got my beautiful wife to try to reach over and say, <laughs> okay, you shut up and, yeah. and so, I don't um, tell you to shut up. Yeah, uh, she does. I just tell <laughs> hey, okay. my not gonna get we're not gonna do any good for him having a stroke uh, well my wife tells me to shut up sometimes too so there uh, you go right <laughs> hey man it's it's not a result no it's just great <laughs> shut up you're you shut up sometimes oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, shut up and just be pretty yeah yeah <laughs> well that but see he even does it with a compliment though right so you're like okay yeah i, I don't i don't i never insult people very smooth I, larry I, you're very smooth uh, <laughs> i i tried to be diplomatic about it and uh look i mean we have lived this for four years and for a, a, a married couple to go through this and lose what we've lost and lose that love that we got from from the kids, from Charles, because we love Charles. I did. He was a cool brother-in-law. And uh, he never met a mirror that he didn't look, stop, and adore himself. <laughs> and, and, and he had ever right because he was a good-looking man, and he was he was a he was a man's man, and um, so it, 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 it those are the, the things that Kay and I just uh, you know we absolutely miss, and and it's hard, and it's just not Kay and I too. Please understand that there's brothers and sisters that love Charles so much. And, and and nieces and nieces and, and, and nephews and and friends all over the country. Charles, I mean, he was just one special man. And Lori totally wasted her golden goose for an idiot. <laughs> well, you guys should see. I made a mug with um, with chad's face on it but it's not really his face it's like i took so his chin yeah it sticks out like a half mile i flipped yeah. his head over so his chin was like his forehead and then then his eyes were over here and then it, it was just it's the craziest thing you've ever seen i'll send you a, a picture of it uh, in, yeah, a, in an email <laughs> it's crazy he just, yeah. we call him skippy you know, yeah he's, just a, <laughs> he's a total idiot but uh hey I, look at oh. you know, uh, Gray, one of the great things is because of this, we have met Chad's family, uh, the majority of them. And I can tell you right now, there's not one that we've met that is not welcome in our home to break bread with us. And there's not one of them that I would never not take a call from. Uh, the same with uh, Tammy's mom and dad. Although we never met them, I did talk to them, uh, and and I, I I hurt so bad, and I feel angry at Boyce because because, because okay. he will not allow them to see this in you know on a on a viewing. I, I am that's absurd. I, that I is agree. A, I agree. A BS ruling. And I don't know what it's about. I truly, I can't even think what it's, what, why are what, you, why are you that? doing that? They're, and the same know. thing with us. We've got family that are physically unable to be yeah. there. And, 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 and look, thank God that Kay and I were in a financial position that we have spent so much money 
on lawyers, law firms, flights, hotel rooms, meals, accommodations, and and it it seemed well in four years it's never ended. I'm never going to ask anybody for help. That, that won't do it. You can't. You'd be surprised at how many people want to do the, the yeah. what do you call it Go the, the GoFundMe yeah. stuff. But no, I ain't doing that. I, and, I I really want to at some point when. Uh, Really, we're catching our breath now, but at some point, we are wanting to uh, uh, create a foundation, and we—I haven't—I haven't thought it all the way through yet. Well, once you do, let me know. I'll definitely add it because I donate on this channel. We donate like, you know, uh, last year sixty-two thousand dollars from the income from the channel. So if you go do a foundation, we'll definitely add that into the rotation. Yeah. All right. Uh, once this is mm -hmm. satisfied. Once we've gone th through Laurie's trial, Chad's trial, Charles's, uh, Laurie's next murder case, Charles's trial, and and it, and look, we assume that this is going to take another few years. So, uh, but once we get through these initial trials, we want to do something for for JJ. And more than that, we want to do something for the school that was so in the schools, the exactly. two schools. Maybe yeah. it could be something for like, you know, autistic people, you know, Absolutely. a foundation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the school is that his last teacher, that he was last enrolled in, uh, that was what he was in. And I still visualize every day J.J. sitting in the middle of his classmates and reading his book, and he'd pick it up, and he'd turn it to each one of his classmates. He'd turn it around so they, so could, they see could see what he was reading. And I think about that, and it's like, how marvelous, how, how spiritual can you get other than that? And, and this is all, I mean, we have our memories. She'll never take our memories. Chad will never take our memories. No one will. But let me, without a doubt, tell you, we were asked yesterday in a major interview, what one thought do we have? last thought with, that we have with JJ and Kay said this one and I said I don't have one thought because I go back to our home that got tore up in, in the hurricane and I sit out on those big magnificent oak trees and I see JJ there I can still hear him there I know he's there because that's where that's where he was JJ. He was free. We were on a one road in, one road out, subdivision. It was- At the very end. And we were the last house in the <laughs> subdivision. And everyone around us just loved JJ. And you can and, just picture him there still in your mind, right? Just right oh, there. I, I told the lady yesterday, I said, you know, I can close my eyes and look at Mr. De Villiers, at Mr. Villiers' house, our friend right across the road, our neighbor and our friend, our close friend. And I can see JJ sitting there on the porch with her talking to her. And I mean, here he is four years old, five years old, and he's carrying on a conversation with a grown woman. And he'd go up and sometimes he'd knock on the door and, and Mr. V. A. maybe maybe didn't hear him, and so he'd go to the on the end of the porch and he'd sit on the steps, and so sooner or later, you know, she may come out, and you, I can't get those visions out of my head. <laughs> I can't get that. I, that's my memories of him sitting out on on the on the driveway and uh, outside of the house and sitting. He never he sat his, very long. No, 
and, but he would yeah. get his five gallon drum and turn it upside down. <laughs> he'd get some pots and put them in chairs and he made his drums. And and um, what was the band that he? Oh, he loved Queen. Queen. And he loved Bohemian oh, yeah. Rhapsody. And Bohemian nice. Rhapsody. Yeah. And I, I can, I go out there in the evening time by myself. And because our house we're hoping will be rebuilt by next year. And I, I've had numerous people say, well, Larry, why don't you just sell that house? And I can't. I, I know that's where JJ was happy. And, and uh, everybody in the neighborhood just loved him to death. And I, I can't. And so that's memories that when they, when the good Lord calls me, and I'm no late, if I'm not able to have a memory, then I will see him in person one day. And I can't wait for, uh, in a sense for that day because I just want to hear his voice. Mm. Oh, Paul. Yeah, man, I think it's just. Sorry. Oh, that's a man. You don't have to say you're sorry. That's uh, I think everybody. I mean, I think a lot of people in the chat feel exactly how you're feeling right now. And I can, you know, I've had a sibling die before, so I know exactly what your it feels like. It's just, uh, yeah. you know, it's it's a nightmare, you know, and especially how this happened. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't anything. It was psychos who did this, yeah. and, and the trials are coming up here and. Or one of them in three days. I don't know when the next one is, but uh, hopefully you guys get to go in and watch uh, or whatever their ruling is going to be. But I, you guys deserve to be able to watch every second of every bit of it. But it should have been on television so that people didn't have to travel all around that are family members that live all around the country. Okay. So, well, it goes back to what we've said on numerous occasions. <laughs> We feel like justice was not served in, in when it came to the the court decisions. That you know, we pray that that there's nothing more than I would love to see than walk in that courthouse or the day before that there's a ruling that the judge is going to allow cameras and that the the public gets to get a little bit of, of what truly happened and that justice will will be served and and uh, is he still able to change it i mean is he still thinking about it or oh uh, yeah we, we don't know we no, no he's ruled and that's just how it's going to be I, yeah. I think in uh, larry's imagination he's hoping for <laughs> you're it. hoping okay oh he's hoping for it. absolutely yeah. I, yeah. i'll never hope for it i'll never give up that that there will be an honest uh, vision of what goes on there, a true vision to the public with the cameras. I'll always, I mean. An unobscured view. Unobscured yeah. view, absolutely. A correct view. And I look at all the other trials that have been on TV. The successful cameras, trials. Successful, successful trials. The people are now on death row. Uh, you know, come or on. Not. Or in regular prison. Yeah, or in prison. Right. Uh, yeah. If the Supreme Court will allow it and the tr local traffic court will allow it, what is so special ab about this that it won't be allowed? Yeah, it's probably something else. <laughs> something else going on there. And, you know, and, and I, I just, and it's not only for us in this trial, there's other trials in Idaho that deserve the public needs to know what's going on. All these secret handshake meetings and and knock knock on the doors and we, we got to go run get in a bucket and let's close the lid so nobody else can know what's going on. <laughs> to me, that's nothing but bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But I mean, listen, I, look, you guys are only supposed to be here for an hour. You, and from your words, and it's been an hour and fifteen. So I appreciate you guys giving me extra minutes there um but man it's been so great seeing you guys again it was great seeing you at crime con for that limited amount of time that it i got was, to see it, but it was, look uh, 
we, I, we have to apologize again because we haven't been back on your show as much, but our lives are so damn complicated right now and so stressful that, I mean, I'll tell you right now, there's times when we literally have to turn everything off. We don't even turn lights on sometimes. And, and <laughs> we just, you know, yeah, I get it. We, we, plug, we have to. And uh, I, I just, I, I do apologize for that because I do feel you're a good man and I do feel you're doing it for the right reason. And I, I do watch your show periodically. Uh, I, I don't watch all of them all the time because sometimes we, we just can't watch them. And sometimes we just have to unplug. And I don't, I can't stand to see Kay hurt. Yeah. And I, well, you don't, you don't owe I, me an apology or anything like. That. Don't worry about that. And I, I just can't. Un, sometimes I want to choke people and say, "You idiot!" And, and <laughs> I say that out loud on my show to people often. <laughs> hey, all right, cool. And thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here, and um, maybe we can do it again sometime, you know, in a few months, maybe get some. Look, we're going to be up there. Are you going up? Oh, uh, I actually just... live in Oregon, so I was thinking maybe doing something. I don't know. I mean, we're in Oregon. We're in Oregon. I live in Oregon. Portland, so it's like, you know, oh, okay. probably four or 500 miles or something. But... Yeah. Well, I, I can well assure you that if you come up, let's have a scotch and water. <laughs> okay. No, a scotch on a rock. There you go. There you go. That's right. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> or a smooth bourbon. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. So, uh, hey, well, it's great having you, and ho hopefully we can get get you back on soon. And everybody loves you in the chat. Hearts are everywhere, and uh, you guys are awesome. And I hope everything runs smoothly for you guys for these trials. All right. We do too. And to all your followers, and obviously we can't see anything anybody's printing uh, or asking. Thank y'all. And you'll never know how much, how much we need y'all support at times. And we don't ask for anything, but thank everyone for that. Okay. It's always hard to say goodbye to you guys, but go, right. go do what you're going to do. All right. <laughs> all right. See you Thanks. guys later. Have a good one. Thank you. Great. You too. Bye. Bye. Record. All right. Wow. That was awesome. Larry and Kay. What we're going to be doing are, uh, got another, I mean, those guys are just so, <laughs> you know, like they're just so awesome. That's all you can say, really. But uh, we're going to be doing another show, our normal donation night, uh, a little bit later. And that allows us to, you know, make that last push at the end of the month and try to, uh, I'm going to try to get to something like, I think we've already done 1,500 so this month. If I can get to 4,500 or so, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, but what do you guys think of that? I thought that was a pretty, it was awesome. I mean, it was great seeing them again. It just felt like old times. Because they'd been on here, I think, two or three times back in 2019. And then, you know, I think it was like, you know, they had contracts and stuff with Dateline. So Dateline didn't want us to uh, communicate with them anymore. And so they can't. You know, it's not like they didn't want to or something like that. So. Well, thanks, Crystal, a.k.a. Beaver Gaming Sub Sub Crystal. All right, so we're going to come back on here in probably 15 minutes or so with the our regular donation night show. And the first hour is just that one last push if people want to help support the channel, whatever. And then after that, we'll go over some of the, um, uh, let's see, <coughs> the Talon, missing child named Talon, his... Um, uh, there, was a, there was a press conference in that one, and we can go over that and... Now it's starting to look like the father, the biological father, is involved. As a matter of fact, I'd be shocked if he isn't the person who killed the uh, mom. Even though at the first press conference he said he wasn't involved, he he's actually at the hospital with cuts on his arms, <laughs> and he's still sitting in the hospital. And there's no 
no he won't uh, cooperate with police yeah we know American lady I just said that all right hey thank and thanks everybody for the super chats on this show uh, Zozo uh, something for Mary Regina Carter Plato Danielle Rogers Lisa Murphy Paisley Dreams Alley Cake Rebecca the nap time Jiggy England Stacy uh, oh, Stacy Galloway uh, Griminator Patty LN Georgina Stoliker Jessica and Karen Van Patten Simple Life Days Something for Mary Noreen Gardner well thank you I appreciate it. So what I'll do is tomorrow I'll do the spin for all the people on donation night, but I'll, I have the spins already set up for the Freak 101s, the Oogla Boogla Freaks, the Megazoids, Patreon, and Moderator. I have that set up. All right, so thank you guys very much for being here, and thank you very much to Kay and Larry, you got to say it in the correct order there, for uh, being on the show, they're absolutely awesome people. You can just tell every time you talk to them. That's how they are in real life too. They're, you know, they're just great people. So that's all you can say. And it's just such a tragedy that JJ didn't get to have such a great grand uh, grandfather and grandmother for all the rest of those years that he would have been on this earth. You know, it's just uh, sucks. Hey, thanks, Baca. Film Chick 63. All right, so we'll see you guys later. And as I always say, everybody, until next time, which is in 15 or 20 minutes, be safe out there. And where is that? Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is. Uh oh, it paused, everybody. Did it just freeze? <laughs> oh, oh, there, there it is. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, free connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector with all respect, ya. Just remember, I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda, I'm no pretender, and I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. <laughs> I should have a big anvil come yeah, out of the so air and get squish. Right All right, everybody. Talk to you. All right, thanks, everybody, and be safe out there.